Hello and welcome to the Matthew Walton Art Channel again. Um, here I am again, I'm planning to do a time-lapse um, video of me painting um, a small still life of some peppers and chillies. Um, it's in response to the latest um, Fortnightly Art Challenge on the Patreon. Um, those of you that follow the channel will know that I've got a Patreon and that we do these Fortnightly Art Challenges. The current topic, picked by me, bizarrely, is chiaroscuro. So, um, I wish I'd not picked that. <laughs> I've been struggling with it a little bit, really. So, it's sort of all about strong directional lighting and black shadows. So, high contrast paintings. A bit in the style of, sort of Caravaggio, that sort of thing. It's most often used for things like figurative work. But I'm doing a still life with it. So I took a reference photograph, I bought some peppers uh, and chilies and stuff and, and took a reference photograph using a black backdrop um, and a desk lamp for lighting and, and whatever. Um, so that's the plan. Um, I've cut a piece of plywood to um, size, it's about 20 by 20 centimetres. It's um, uh, primed with gesso as you can see, white gesso. Um, the first stage of this painting will be to draw it out. Um, I'll be using just my mechanical pencil for that. I won't spend masses of time doing that. Um, it's just so that roughly things are laid out where they need to be uh, in terms of representing the reference. And then I will be using oil paints, the normal um, dial around in gradual oil paints that I use um, to actually do the painting. It's quite small, it's smaller than life, um, so that might be a little problem in terms of getting the detail right. But we'll iron all those problems out, hopefully, as I progress. Okay, so I'll start with the drawing, let's see how we get on. Starting at the top of the painting, as usual. Safe smudging as you go down. I've stood a large yellow pepper up um, the background, so just getting the shape of that in. And then there are some um, chilies that are sort of arranged at the bottom of that large yellow pepper. So just the main outlines, just to, so I can know where to put the paint on when I begin. Well, that's the drawing done and I'm now starting by putting the black background in. I am actually using black for this background. I would normally mix a dark colour for, for blacks using ultramarine and, and raw umber or burnt umber, I can't remember which. Um, but I thought well I hardly ever use this ivory black that's in this this set of paints so why not use it. I'm not using liquid to thin it, as I have discovered that with plywood you don't really need to do that. It spreads quite nicely onto the, the plywood anyway without making it any thinner. You can see that there are brush marks showing in it so far, but of course they will be ironed out as I add more layers of paint to it uh, and also smooth the paint out as the painting progresses. So I've put the background in quite precisely around the actual subject which is the peppers. You can see there that I'm starting to smooth out some of the brush strokes that I've, I've roughly put in with the first coat. About to start on the, um, the main subject now. I'm currently mixing the, the yellows that are in the pepper. There's quite a few yellows. I'm using all three yellows in the set of paints. Starting with a very bright yellow because the, the lighting is quite bright even though it's a dark background. Lots of sh uh, sort of reflected highlights. 
you can see a sort of a, a more warm yellow going on after that cool yellow. Now filling in the, the red chili. Again, really bright, it's really nice, colourful painting. There's certainly no, no greys going on here. I normally like working in greys. And now the two green chilies. And of course, as soon as the, the white disappears, it's easier to see the tones that you need to add going forwards. Not much white left now, just the stalks. Now trying to add some of the three dimensionality of the yellow pepper. It's um, built up gradually over a few layers to be fair. And I tried to get, there is some light shining through the pepper, um, but also reflecting from the red chili. So you'll see as I add these darker shades on the, the left of the pepper as we're looking at it, um, they become quite red and that helps to give the impression of the light shining through the flesh of the pepper, but also the reflection from the chili that's beneath it. It's just a case of very gradually building up the, the shadows using darker and darker color. You can see there that I've added some red to that shadowed area. in the shadow at the top there and also the shadow of the, the actual stalk that's sticking out the top of the yellow pepper. It's refined later on but it's, it's just to, to get the, the beginning impression of it. That's the joy of using oil paints, you can keep moving things around for quite a while. It stays dry for a few days really. It's also the, an advantage of course but it's also a disadvantage in that sometimes it's difficult to apply paint over the top of the paint you've already added when it's still wet. And I do like painting a la prima really, all in one go. So um, that can be sometimes quite difficult to get details added over the top of paint that you've already added. But persevering normally works. You can see it's just very fine details added that make the difference. And it's starting to look like a three dimensional pepper I'm beginning to. Now doing the same on those basic blocking colours of the, the green chilli at the front and the one behind. Finally filling in the stalks to get rid of the last bits of white on this plywood. There you can see I'm using a, a longer paintbrush to lean on, so it goes onto the actual easel at the side of the painting, but gives you something to, hand, to rest your hand on as you're putting some details on, rather than smudge the work on the edge of the painting that you've already added. Gradually trying to build up that stalk to make that look 3D as well, so darker on the left and some highlights on the right where the light's coming from. Now some very white highlights on the pepper, which really make it pop. Uh, it is a very shiny pepper. It's a, a nice fresh pepper, so it's got lots of shine on it. And I think that really just helps make it zing the, in the painting.
hiding up the shadow of the stalk now. Still adding to those shadows on the left, trying to get that light coming through the, the pepper as well as reflected light. More shadow at the bottom as well to give it a, a rounded effect. You can see how easy it is to blend the colours while they're still wet, which is an advantage of using oils over acrylics, for instance, which dry really quickly. You sort of tend to have to blend sort of dry brush blend with, with acrylics, unless you're using lots of retardant medium to slow down the drying. And if you're doing that, I sort of don't see the point of using acrylics over oils, really. Apart from the smell, of course, because whenever you're painting with oil paints, it's quite a fumey thing to work with. So you have to make sure there's plenty of ventilation in the room that you're working in. Now trying to add some depth of colour from that plain wash on the, the green chilli, or both green chillies. I'd had a break at this point, so that little break that you just saw there was me having lunch outside in the garden. It was a really lovely sunny day, so I really wanted to be outside really rather than painting indoors. But this had to be done because the the deadline for the Patreon art challenge was coming up. Um, so as I was off work, I really had to do it today. Now adding some of the shadow on the shadow side of the red chili. And you can see how from the initial first wash where you can wash the first blocking in of the, the chilies you can really get some depth in with with oil paints now a slight highlight on the top of the chili it's i add it quite strongly and then tone it down a little bit because it's it's not strong highlight it's, it's reflection from the yellow pepper i think really that little white highlight on the edge the end of the the chili as well and now adding some sort of half reflections on the lumpiness of the of the green chili there it's just catching the light coming from the the right hand side adding some detail to the stalks and of course the stalks at the moment are quite fat a bit bit thick really but of course with oils you can then sort of make them smaller by going over the edge of them with the black that I've used for the background. So you can sort of push and pull things into the sort of shape that you want them to be with oils. And over time there's no rush because it's not going to dry and become fixed. Now a strong highlight on that front chilli which is a small sort of jalapeno type chilli. Trying to add the three-dimensionality of that jalapeno chili at the front there. It sort of disappears into the gloom and then the, the stalk emerges where the light catches it. Now return to the background a little bit because it's still quite blotchy at the moment because um, there's only one layer of black paint on that most of that background so I'm just sort of trying to add a bit more black paint and smooth out that background a little bit 
you don't want the background to distract from the details of the actual subject that you're painting. There you could see me thinning the stalk to make it a bit thinner by adding black around it and pushing over the edge of what I'd already painted in green. And that's me signing it, so it must be about finished. I'm well, beginning to sign it, and I'll sign it again in a second. I tend not to sign things until I think they are finished, and if I see something else that needs working on, it won't be signed until it is finished. But at this point, it is really just little tweaks. It's pretty much finished, really. And then we go signing it again. Well, this is the final painting. Overall, I'm quite happy with it. It took about four hours, I think, in total, uh, including the drawing out. Um, it's got um, the right sort of look to it, I think. It's quite um, atmospheric with the, the black background. And overall, it's, it's not too bad. Um, I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. I hope it inspires you to have a go at something similar yourself. If you are new here, then do consider subscribing if you've enjoyed this video. I try and do quite a few um, sort of time-lapse videos, but also other videos um, that are following my journey as trying to become a, a sort of commercial artist over time. Um, so I've done some recently about exhibiting my work um, and all sorts of different, different bits and bobs. So do consider subscribing. Uh, if you've enjoyed it, then do give it a thumbs up. That'll help the channel grow. And do comment on the videos as well. Um, I'd love to hear what people think um, about them and the paintings. Um, is there anything that I could be doing that you do that, that might improve my work? Is there anything that you've seen that you like and, and you might use in your work? Okay then, well, um, thanks for your time and I will see you on the next one. Bye.